Hey folks, I uh, just wanted to take a few minutes here and explain a couple of things. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, a lot of misinformation has been put out uh, lately, and I've gotten a lot of questions in regards to pressure, vacuum, and uh, stabilization. Basically, how this all really works. Uh, I've heard uh, that uh, some other individuals who claim to be an expert in this are saying that pressure has absolutely no effect whatsoever. Well, if pressure had no effect whatsoever, then we wouldn't have stabilization uh, to begin with, especially not with a vacuum, because vacuum is negative pressure, so it's all related to pressure. So I'm gonna explain here real quick, uh, as best I can, as simply as I can, uh, how this all works together and how to get the best results uh, for, your, uh, for your stabilization process using positive and negative pressure. Uh, the two actually go very well hand in hand. Uh, you can not have an entire process with one without the other. And I'm gonna explain how that works even if you're not using a pressure pot. So, one atmosphere. is roughly equal to, and I need to make this a little bit bigger, 14.69595 PSI. 14.69595 PSI, pounds per square inch. Okay, so one atmosphere weighs this much if you're at sea level in a perfect situation. But you can also check the weather and check out your barometric pressure for that day. What's the difference? Well, barometric pressure is basically our measurement of the amount of pressure. Whereas one atmosphere is the amount of force exerted by an atmosphere. Okay, here's where we get into a little bit of crazy science that difficult to explain a little bit. So force is the amount of pressure applied by particles. Uh, basically, when you're standing here, out in the open, you have got air particles, gas bouncing off of your skin body on all surfaces at 14.69595 PSI. Okay, right here. That's your PSI. That's the pressure you're walking around in. If you are measuring on a gauge, it always shows as zero because positive and negative pressure can be measured two ways. They're actual pressure, but 99% of the gauges that you look at out there are relative gauges, meaning that it is a pressure positive or negative relative to your atmosphere. Okay, barometric pressure. We check the news and we look at the weather and it gives us a barometric pressure for that, uh, for that day. You know, if it goes up, if it goes down, it can tell us whether a storm's coming, weather's shifting. So really dense water laden air is heavier. You got a lot of water molecules in that heavy air. The barometer goes up. The barometer goes up because you've got an increased measurement of weight of the atmosphere above you weather is coming. If that barometer drops, the air is drying out, it's getting thinner, it doesn't weigh as much. Why is this relevant? Because one atmosphere is the direct force of particles on particles. Your barometric pressure is an actual measurement and reading of what it is right then and there at that point and how it's affecting you relative to what you're going to draw in a vacuum. So, if you were at very high elevation and your atmosphere at that elevation is closer to 13 PSI, but your barometer is reading closer to 14 PSI, then you've got some really heavy weight in your atmosphere. The measurement is different than the actual force applied of the atmosphere. It's all thermal dynamics and it's a bit crazy. You don't really need to understand all that concept. All you need to know really is that this number is going to jump all over the place. And what your negative draw in a vacuum is in relation to this is your maximum 
theoretical perfect vacuum. And we can look those up with charts and everything else online. Okay, so why am I starting with this? Simple. We have a chart here. If this is one atmosphere, then your blank sits right here at one atmosphere in the beginning when it's out in the open. After you've dried it, you throw it in a couple of Ziploc bags to cool off and come back down with no moisture in it, your blank is still at one atmosphere of pressure. Now you submerge that in resin and you pull a vacuum. Very slowly, the pressure inside your blank starts to drop. The bubbles are coming out. We're bubbling, we're bubbling, we're bubbling. Now, your bubbles stop. You are not at a perfect negative vacuum inside that blank. Not going to happen. You're not going to fully evacuate it your first time. Same as you can't hit a theoretical perfect vacuum. We always get to the nth decimal close to it, but we can't ever get that perfect vacuum because you can't possibly evacuate every single molecule in the space between the resin and the res top of your chamber, your evacuation port. There's always going to be a molecule bouncing around. Sometimes they actually bounce backwards. If you think about it like the, uh, the fun games that they like to play with ping pong balls in a chamber, or they put you inside of a tube and there's a bunch of dollar bills in there and they draw a vacuum and the dollar bills start flying. All right, you got to catch them before they're all sucked out, but at the end, they don't all suck out. They just kind of float around randomly because, well, that's how it works. At first, it's linear. It's almost fluid in the way that the gas will escape the vacuum chamber. At the end, there's not enough molecules in there to create a river of molecules. So they all just kind of bounce around randomly and eventually get picked up by the hose and evacuated out of the chamber. We can't get a theoretical perfect. You're never gonna get a theoretical perfect vacuum on your first round. Now, the difference between here, when you start your soak, and here, will be your X component, okay? So, if you start your soak here at one atmosphere, this is your difference and the blank will gradually climb up to one atmosphere. So soaking for two times as long, eh, okay, well, that's a good rule of thumb if you're just beginning and don't have a clue, but it really has absolutely no scientific or practical basis, other than it's long enough to get enough resin in there that you feel a difference. You're not doing the proper job here. So if you want to make this line this arc right here move faster, put it in a pressure pot. Now the difference between your X component here and we'll say 60 or 120 PSI, something that you can safely get most of the time at home, is here. Now over time, as it's trying to get back, now remember you want to get right here at one atmosphere for equality, you've got a difference in pressure pushing that resin in deeper, faster. So you can actually do this with your soak time, much shorter on the timeline. Now, you still haven't gotten past here. So what do we do? We put it back into vacuum. And now, if we picture a block of wood, and I'll try and get this dark enough that it shows up on camera. So if we picture this as our block of wood, uh, right, so we've got our, our thickness here, and our amount of penetration is, now keep in mind, you're coming from both sides. So this is just a, a simple chart to show you max pen penetration by percentage. Percentage of penetration here, okay? So you get this much fully penetrated and fully saturated in your blank when you're right here. Now, here's a fun thought. If you put that back in vacuum before you cure, this fluid level is going to be with resin, the same as in, in, your, in your vacuum chamber. Now that resin did not expand with the vacuum. 
and it did not contract when you put it in your pressure pot. It doesn't move, positive or negative pressure. We haven't hit a phase transition. It hasn't gone to gas or solid. It's not moving. That's hyd hydraulics. And that's, I mean, you got your, your uh, earth movers and your, your front end loaders and your, all your diggers, everything runs on hydraulics. If you want to move a considerable amount of force through a small pipe, you use hydraulics. We're going to use hydraulics here because now we're going to apply this vacuum and all of this right here becomes a plunger in your syringe. It's pulling and it's pulling on this gas right here that is still trapped in the blank. The gas and the moisture content that is still in there. So the second round of vacuum, it takes a little while for these bubbles to start because it's trapped down here and you've got to pull that fluid back out and open a pathway for those bubbles to come out. And when those bubbles come out, you know you got something started. When they stop again, you are now way down here and your vacuum relative inside the blank is now down here, getting closer and closer to this theoretical perfect. And if you put that back into a pressure pot afterwards for your soak period, you can get an even greater distance between the force applied on the outside versus the relative pressure inside the blank. Is that going to get you better results? Absolutely, because in a shorter amount of time, you create this really steep graph as opposed to this diminishing graph here that takes forever. Two times the, uh, the amount of time it took the bubbles to stop? No. Every wood is gonna be different. There's a different density. There is a different cell structure. There are different path, pathways, different obstructions for everything to escape or to penetrate. Capillary action, thermodynamics, hydraulics. You look at the big picture, there you go. Run your cycles, more than one vacuum before you cure if you want full penetration and full suction. If you do a simple vacuum and soak on your first color, then there is still obvious room here and down here for your follow-on colors. You can run vacuum on your first colors. There's still room. That's why it works, because you didn't get full saturation the first round. You never will. You could leave it in there for six months, and you might get a whole lot closer down here but you're never gonna fully evacuate that thing until you start using that resin, the liquid resin that's already in that blank as the plunger to draw the force starting deeper in the blank. Just like a plunger on a syringe, it starts as low as it gets. So when you first start, you can't go very far. Now the first time you go down a little bit, go a couple notches on your syringe, you can pull more in. Okay, so flip that over and we go back that far, put it down, now you're drawing more fluid in and eventually working it, you can use a syringe and eliminate all the air in that syringe by using the fluid down at the bottom and it will draw up from there. All you're left with is the gap above. Very simple way to mentally kind of make sense of that very different but mentally the image that it gives you is very similar you're never going to get that full evacuation 100 percent saturation on the first round you do it multiple rounds you can get denser harder better stabilized blanks by doing multiple rounds or by doing cycles you don't even have to wait for the bubbles to stop you go for a while set yourself a, a timer go for an hour two hours then you put it in pressure, 60 PSI, 120 PSI. All the timelines are going to skew and be different. There's no slide rule for this because the wood density, the cell structure, everything is different every time, every situation, in every scenario. All I can do is offer you a generic bunch of scribbles here to explain you're going to have to get a feel for it in order to understand what time is required to get the quality result that you are after. There is no perfection here. There is only learning and better.
you can better yourself and at a certain point you can get to the point where you've got the best possible product you can with your equipment with your time with your resources and to do better would cost tens of thousands of dollars and extreme measures that honestly just not worth it never gonna get the returns you can get a nearly perfect blank everything stabilizing will always be nearly perfect the resin can't be any more than nearly perfect. I can't eliminate bleed out thermodynamics. As the temperature increases, viscosity decreases, so it's gonna flow easier. It's still gonna dribble out a little bit because it's less resistant to flow. And I can't have it cure instantly as soon as heat is applied. Otherwise, I could never ship it. You could never use it. It wouldn't last. It would just be a problem. It'd be setting up in your tank too quick. It'd be way overactivated, way too touchy. Everything is a give and take. Can I give you a more polishability and harder, denser, more rigid product? Yes, although the hardness scale is about the same between mine and the rest of them. But I've got more memory, kind of like rubber. You press it, it goes back to where it was. That's because I'm cross-linking. Nobody else is cross-linking. They're stealing terms, they're talking about it, they don't know what they're talking about. Here you go, folks. This is a science to how to make your stabilization better. This is how you improve, this is how you understand what's going on in the wood and how to apply a process that works for you with the equipment that you've got. Do you have to have a pressure pot to get this big spike in difference? No, but you are going to have to extend your soak times out and your results might require uh, a few more cycles in order to get it as deep and as fully penetrated uh, without overpressure. You don't need it but be patient with it. Let it go for a long time. Let it soak. Put it on the shelf in a, in a jar to soak and forget about it for a week, maybe two, if you want amazing results. If you're running cycles, pull it back after a day or two, put it back in the vacuum chamber, suck it again, let the bubbles go, let it soak back in for another day or two. But remember, every time you go for another cycle, you're starting deeper and deeper within and it's gonna take longer and longer for that to start with the bubbles and for the soak and penetration to get in. So every cycle you do, you need to extend out your times by a random percentage. Pick it, uh, 20%, 30%, find out what works for you. Again, there's no slide rule. Every wood is different, every source is different. You could get maple from one side of the country, you get maple from the other side of the country, they're completely different trees, different woods, they react absolutely different. The only thing that you can base it on is an average of the species over time in your experience or relative in, uh, to what you've experienced before and use that as a starting point. Everything is relative. I can't give you exact numbers because the math for it would literally take me two or three of these sheets to draw out, to, to write out the equation and I'd honestly never fully explain it properly. To be honest, all I know is the math works, but I don't even truly understand every bit of the equations that are required in order to calculate full saturation and everything else. And there's so many complications that could throw at that math into a skew with a probability of accuracy uh, due to the sap content, the resin content, the tannin content, the moisture content of the wood, uh, how much uh, uh, silica uh, content is in that particular species based on the soil in which it grew and you know even more to the density of the species based on the uh, latitude and longitude of its growth so everything everything combined means there is no perfect answer stop looking for them if you think that Vacuum until the bubbles stop and then soak for twice as long as you've been told for ages is the true honest way to go Well, then by all means enjoy the kool-aid It ain't right And it ain't gonna work for you if you want the best Consider this I'm gonna leave it posted come back and watch it a couple of times see this explanation Hopefully it clicks. If you've got any questions on this, uh, please feel free to reach out. I will try and explain it. If I didn't explain something very well, uh, let me know and I'll try and explain it a bit better. Uh, 
I'm not a scientist, I'm not a chemist background, so some of this stuff uh, really makes sense to me using analogies and mental pictures. So hopefully I can convey a few of those to you uh, as they've been conveyed to me and, and help you make better sense of this. Happy stabilizing and best to you all.